The 23rd Psalm holds a treasure trove of wisdom, comfort, and strength for every believer. My friends, imagine a GPS system that never fails, always guiding you to your destination with perfect accuracy. This divine GPS is the very essence of Psalm 23, a spiritual roadmap that leads us through life's joys and challenges. Today, I invite you to explore the depths of this psalm with fresh eyes and an open heart. We'll uncover the hidden gems of wisdom that can transform your walk with God and revolutionize your perspective on life's challenges. I'm also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends, just as a skilled navigator charts a course through unknown waters, our Heavenly Father guides us through the seas of life. The psalmist, David, beautifully captures this truth in Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. These powerful words set the stage for a journey of faith, trust, and divine provision. Today, I will guide you through three essential aspects of this powerful psalm. Number one, the assurance of God's provision. My dear friends, have you ever felt the weight of worry pressing down on your shoulders? Perhaps you've wondered how you'll make it through the next day or if your needs will be met in a time of uncertainty. In these moments of uncertainty, Psalm 23 offers us a profound truth. Our shepherd provides. When David declares, I shall not want, he's not saying he'll have everything he desires. Rather, he's expressing a deep trust that God will supply all his true needs. This assurance frees us from the chains of anxiety and opens our eyes to God's abundant blessings. Consider the words of Jesus in Matthew 6, verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Our Father cares for the smallest creatures, how much more does he care for you, his beloved child? When we truly grasp this truth, it changes how we view our circumstances. Suddenly, we see God's hand at work, even in the smallest details of our lives. That unexpected check in the mail, the friend who calls at just the right moment, the strength to face another day, these are all examples of our shepherd's provision. But God's provision goes beyond mere physical needs. He provides for our emotional and spiritual well-being as well. In Psalm 23, verse 2, David writes, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. This beautiful imagery speaks of rest, nourishment, and peace. Our shepherd knows when we're running on empty and need to be refilled. He invites us to step away from the hustle and bustle of life and find refreshment in his presence. These moments of stillness are not a luxury, but a necessity for our spiritual health. It's in these quiet times that we can hear God's voice more clearly and align our hearts with his will. As we learn to trust in God's provision, we develop a deeper sense of contentment. We begin to see that true fulfillment comes not from accumulating more things, but from knowing the giver of all good gifts. This contentment allows us to live with open hands, ready to receive God's blessings and share them with others. The Apostle Paul understood this principle well. In Philippians 4, verses 11 to 13, he writes, Not that I speak in regard to need, 
For I have learned, in whatever state I am, to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere, and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul's secret to contentment was his unwavering trust in God's provision. He knew that whether he had much or little, his true source of strength and satisfaction was Christ. This same truth applies to us today. When we make the Lord our shepherd, we tap into an endless supply of grace, strength, and provision. No matter what challenges we face, we can stand firm in the knowledge that our needs will be met. But here's the key. We must actively choose to trust God's provision. It's not always easy, especially when circumstances seem dire. Yet, it's in these moments of choosing faith over fear that we experience God's power most profoundly. As we lean into His promises, we'll find that He is faithful beyond measure. My friends, I encourage you to take a moment right now and reflect on God's provision in your life. Where have you seen His hand at work, even in small ways? As you recognize these blessings, let gratitude fill your heart and strengthen your faith. Remember, our shepherd's provision is not just for survival, but for abundant living. John 10 verse 10 reminds us, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. This abundant life is available to each one of us as we trust in our Good Shepherd's provision. Number two, the comfort of His presence in dark times. My dear friends, life is not always green pastures and still waters. Sometimes we find ourselves walking through valleys of darkness, facing trials that seem overwhelming. It's in these moments that Psalm 23 offers us a powerful promise of God's unwavering presence. Psalm 23, verse 4 declares, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Notice that David doesn't say if we walk through dark valleys. But he said, though we walk through them. My friends, challenges are a part of life, but we don't face them alone. Our shepherd walks beside us, guiding and protecting us even in the darkest of times. The rod and staff mentioned here are tools of the shepherd's trade. The rod was used for protection against predators, while the staff helped guide and rescue sheep. In the same way, God's presence offers us both protection and guidance in our trials. When we're lost in the darkness of despair, His staff gently redirects us to the right path. When we're threatened by fear or doubt, His rod defends us against these spiritual attacks. My friends, there's immense comfort in knowing we're not alone in our struggles. Isaiah 43 verse 2 beautifully captures this truth. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. God doesn't promise to remove all hardships from our lives, but He does promise to be with us through them. His presence transforms our perspective on these challenges. Instead of seeing them as overwhelming obstacles, we can view them as opportunities for growth and deeper reliance on God. Think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Their faith wasn't in God's ability to deliver them from the fire, but in His presence with them in the fire. And because of their unwavering trust, 
they experienced God's miraculous protection. Similarly, when we trust in God's presence during our trials, we open ourselves to His supernatural intervention. But even when miracles don't happen the way we expect, we can still find peace. Because the greatest miracle is the transformation that occurs within us as we lean on God's strength. Paul understood this well when he wrote in 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Our weaknesses become the very places where God's strength shines brightest. When we acknowledge our need for Him, we position ourselves to experience His power in profound ways. This doesn't mean we'll always feel strong or courageous in the face of trials. Let us be honest. There will be moments of fear, doubt, and even despair. But in those moments, we can choose to remember that our Shepherd is right there with us. His presence is not dependent on our feelings or circumstances. It's a constant reality that we can lean into, even when we can't see or feel it. My friends, whatever valley you're walking through right now, know that you're not alone. Your shepherd is with you, guiding your steps and protecting you from harm. His presence brings light to the darkest places and hope to the most desperate situations. As you navigate your challenges, I encourage you to continually remind yourself of God's presence. Speak His promises over your situation. Meditate on scriptures that affirm His constant care and protection. One powerful practice is to memorize Psalm 23 itself. Let these words of comfort sink deep into your heart, ready to encourage you in times of need. Remember, the valley is not your final destination. It's a place you're passing through, and your shepherd is leading you to greener pastures ahead. Even in the midst of trials, we can experience the peace that surpasses all understanding. Philippians 4 verse 7 assures us, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This supernatural peace is available to us when we choose to trust in God's presence. It doesn't mean we won't feel pain or sorrow, but it does mean we have an anchor for our souls in the storm. My dear friends, I want you to know that your dark valleys have a purpose. They're not punishment or abandonment from God, but opportunities for deeper intimacy with Him. As you lean into His presence during these times, you'll discover strengths you never knew you had. You'll experience God's faithfulness in new and profound ways. And you'll emerge from the valley with a testimony that will encourage others facing similar challenges. So don't lose heart in your trials. Your shepherd is with you, comforting and guiding you every step of the way. Trust in His presence and let it transform your perspective on your challenges. And number three, the promise of His eternal goodness. My friends, as we journey through Psalm 23, we arrive at a powerful declaration of God's enduring love and faithfulness. Psalm 23 verse 6 proclaims, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This verse is not just a hopeful wish but a confident assertion of God's character and His plans for us. The word, surely, leaves no room for doubt. 
God's goodness and mercy are guaranteed companions on our life journey. Let's break this down further. Goodness speaks of God's benevolence, His desire to bless and prosper us in every way. It's not just about material blessings, but about everything that contributes to our well-being and fulfillment. Mercy, on the other hand, refers to God's compassion and forgiveness. It's His tendency to withhold the punishment we deserve and instead shower us with grace. Together, these qualities paint a picture of a God who is actively working for our good. Even when we falter or fail, the psalmist says, these qualities will follow us all the days of our lives. The Hebrew word used here, radaf, actually means to pursue or chase. Isn't that a beautiful image? God's goodness and mercy aren't passive traits that we occasionally stumble upon. They're actively pursuing us, chasing us down with relentless love and grace. No matter where we go or what we do, we can't outrun God's goodness and mercy. This truth should fill us with immense hope and security. Even in our darkest moments, when we feel furthest from God, His goodness and mercy are right on our heels. They're working to restore us, to bring us back to the path of righteousness. The Apostle Paul understood this concept well. In Romans 8, verses 38 to 39, he writes, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing can separate us from God's love, and by extension, from His goodness and mercy. This promise isn't just for this life, but extends into eternity. The psalmist declares, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the ultimate destination of our journey with the Good Shepherd. We're not just wandering aimlessly through life. We're being led to an eternal home in God's presence. This promise gives purpose and direction to our lives. It reminds us that our current circumstances, whether good or bad, are temporary. We're headed towards an eternity where we'll experience the fullness of God's goodness and mercy. In John 14, verses 2 to 3, Jesus affirms this promise. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Our shepherd is preparing an eternal dwelling place for us, where we'll live in his presence forever. This promise should transform how we view our current struggles and joys. Knowing that we have an eternal home waiting for us puts everything else into perspective. It gives us the strength to endure hardships and the wisdom to hold our blessings with open hands. My dear friends, I want you to grasp the magnitude of this promise. You are eternally loved and pursued by a God whose goodness and mercy know no bounds. Your life has a glorious destination, an eternity in the presence of your loving shepherd. This truth should fill you with unshakable hope and joy, regardless of your current circumstances. It should empower you to live with courage and purpose, knowing that your future is secure in God's hands. As we internalize this promise, it changes how we navigate life's challenges. We begin to see them not as obstacles to our happiness, but as opportunities for growth and deeper trust in our shepherd. We learn to find joy 
not just in our blessings, but in God's presence itself. Psalm 16 verse 11 beautifully expresses this truth. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. True joy and fulfillment are found not in our circumstances, but in God's presence. And the beautiful thing is, we don't have to wait for heaven to experience this joy. As we walk with our shepherd daily, allowing his goodness and mercy to overtake us, we can taste the sweetness of his presence right here and now. This is the abundant life that Jesus promised, a life overflowing with God's goodness and mercy. So, my friends, I encourage you to embrace this promise with all your heart. Let it sink deep into your soul and transform your outlook on life. Wake up each morning with the expectation that God's goodness and mercy are pursuing you. Look for evidences of His love and grace in your daily experiences. And when you face challenges, remember that they can't separate you from God's goodness and mercy. These divine qualities are still chasing you down, working all things for your good. Also, let the promise of your eternal home fill you with hope and purpose. Live each day in light of eternity, storing up treasures in heaven rather than on earth. Use your time, talents, and resources to advance God's kingdom, knowing that your labor in the Lord is never in vain. My friends, I pray that these truths from Psalm 23 take deep root in your heart. Walk confidently with your good shepherd and experience his provision, presence, and promises in every season of life. Let the certainty of God's everlasting goodness and mercy strengthen your faith and ignite a deeper passion for him. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, You are the Good Shepherd, the one who leads us beside still waters and restores our souls. Your majesty is beyond compare. Your love is boundless and your wisdom is infinite. I praise your holy name for your grace and mercy. Sovereign Lord, I thank you for the gift of life, for your daily provisions and blessings. Lord, I thank you for your constant provision in my life, for supplying all my needs according to your riches in glory. I'm grateful for your unwavering presence even in the darkest valleys of my life. Thank you for the promise of eternal goodness that gives me hope and purpose. Merciful Father, I humbly ask for your forgiveness. Forgive me for the times I've doubted your provision and strayed from your path. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness and help me to forgive those who have wronged me just as you have forgiven me. Lord Jesus, I am grateful that you are my good shepherd, and I declare that I shall not want. I rebuke every spirit of lack and scarcity in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind the spirits of fear, anxiety, and doubt that try to shake my trust in your provision. In the name of Jesus, I claim faith, hope, and confidence in your unfailing love and care. Father, guide my steps along the path of righteousness for your name's sake. When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, strengthen my faith to fear no evil. Let your rod and your staff comfort me, protecting me from every attack of the enemy. Prepare a table before me 
in the presence of my enemies, displaying your power and provision. Lord, anoint my head with the oil of your Holy Spirit, filling me with your peace that surpasses all understanding. I declare that your goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life. I receive your abundant blessings, trusting that you're working all things for my good. Father, I pray for healing in every area of my life, physical, emotional, and spiritual. By the stripes of Jesus, I declare that I am healed and made whole. I rebuke every sickness, disease, and spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. Protect me, Lord, from every attack of the enemy, seen and unseen. Shield me from harm, danger, and every evil scheme of the adversary. Lord, extend these same blessings to my loved ones. Let them experience your provision, presence, and eternal promises in their lives. Protect them, heal them, and draw them closer to you each day. Lord, as I say this prayer, together, with everyone listening, Lord, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement, standing on your promises and trusting in your unfailing love. Father, we declare that we are your sheep and we know your voice. Lead us, Good Shepherd, into green pastures and beside still waters. Restore our souls and guide us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke every spirit of fear and anxiety that tries to steal our peace. We bind the spirits of doubt and unbelief that attempt to shake our faith in your provision. Lord, let your Holy Spirit fill us afresh, empowering us to walk confidently in your will. We claim victory over every challenge, knowing that we are more than conquerors through Christ. We declare healing over our bodies, minds, and spirits, receiving your divine health and wholeness. Thank you, Lord, for your protection that surrounds us like a shield. We are grateful for your goodness and mercy that faithfully follow us every day. Let your will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you were blessed by this prayer, type the word Amen in the comment section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you. In the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to our channel, Daily Jesus Devotional, for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all your support. You're blessed to be a blessing. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory and so that other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world can join us and start praying for you right now. Stand in faith with us while we pray. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.